so much for having me. Thank so, uh, Japna ji, I wanted to know from you, uh, with a background of rural development, social work, anthropology, and thereafter working for various NGOs, uh, you have stepped into this creative world of direction and editing. Uh, did you take any formal or informal uh, training before making this film, uh, especially in editing? No, I think it was a really steep learning for me, the film, because I had some very small experience in working with a documentary filmmaking group. This was in uh, maybe 2002 or 2003. And right after that, that was just for one year and we were making films on the political economy, which is very different. Because I think I've been a spiritual traveler for quite some time and I was going from one path to the other and exploring. And as a result of that, I had it in me, around 2016, I had this desire to make a film on one of the lesser known spiritual masters. Although Neem Karoli is fairly well known, but people who know him know him and some people don't know him at all. So, and he's been gone since 1973, you know, he left his body in 1973. But despite that, for people who know him, they access him on a moment to moment basis. So for me, it was really fascinating to, for me to, you know, decide on making this film on Maharaji. And it was like a discovery for me because I was very new to the world when I embarked on this. So earlier you have been into scientific field also. Uh, you have been also associated with Isha Foundation for some time. Uh, so you are into spiritual traveling for a long time. Yes, I, I think in trying to see works for me. And I, I've just been trying to dive deep and find myself. Mm -hmm. And I think the documentary mode is actually a wonderful way to do that. I think uh, all artists are in a way trying to find themselves, aren't they? And creativity allows you that freedom to really go within and seek that inspiration and validation from within. Because you're not, you're trying to make something original, right? And so this, it uplifts the soul. All art uplifts the soul. Right. Uh, so what was your first ever experience uh, which turned it, uh, you into a spiritual traveler uh, or rather I say a seeker? Uh, did any incident or person inspired you or made you think uh, so deeply on this? Well, I would not want to talk too much about my spiritual truth, <laughs> but I, I can tell you more about how I, I came to Maharaji and this and okay. how and then this film kind of started. Huh. So um, I think I was I'd been following this path of yoga and kriya and meditation mm -hmm. for many years. Then I felt this uh, need to you know go deeper within the heart and and explore the path of love and uh, i think around 2017 early 2017 is when that shift started happening a lot and a lot of things started changing in my life simultaneously i just i'd known about neem karoli baba i'd visited his ashram in vrindavan when i I'd, I'd been to vrindavan but um, i heard about kenchi dham around that time and i i I read Miracle of Love, which is a book which is written by Ramdas. And I watched Ramdas' documentary, One Track Heart. And I uh, learned about the Bhandara, which happens on June 15th in Kenchi Dham. And I decided to go there. And when I went there, I was not meaning to, um, you know, make a film at that time. I just went there just like, it, you know, as a seeker. And when I went there right after that, it, and you see that in the film also you see the part of the, about the Bandara when uh, it starts with Kenchi Dham and there is a long line of people who are around the Kenchi Dham Ashram. So that's the Bandara in 2019 there when you see really like vast crowds of people. Mm -hmm. So when I went there in 2017, I think it sort of clicked that I had to make the film on Maharaji. And, uh, and then I didn't know how to go about it. I didn't even contact any of my old contacts in filmmaking. And it just somehow came together because I felt that if I was really meant to make this film, 
then I would be directed and guided on how to go about it. And there were very, very challenging times. But at the same time, every now and then guidance would come forth. And then I felt like this is how it meant to be. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so why have you named this film Wind Windfall of Grace? Uh, any well, because the film was, is about Maharaji and it's about the, the grace that people have experienced. Uh, through him and it's like a windfall you know because you don't know what's coming and and when it comes and it hits you you don't really fully can comprehend it but for a period of time it makes sense you know little by little so so and also the the hindi title is actually i had to keep ripa oh. so for, uh, yeah and it's it's mentioned in the beginning so the hindi title is I had to keep Kripa and one of the very dear friends who's also there in the film, K.K. Shah, he mentions it in the introductory sequence mm -hmm. as to the grace that he experienced and what we experienced from Maharaji is I had to put that. It's a very, it's got a lot of depth, this word, because it means for the grace, you don't need to have necessarily done something to deserve it. You know, we often have this thing that, oh, you know, I should, my past samskaras, or I should have done something really great. Only then can I deserve to be, you know, receiving goodness in my life. And that's, that's not necessary. And for Maharaji, he was bestowing that grace just full blown to anybody and everybody. It didn't matter to him, you know, what, what their past has been. So there's no logic to it. So that's what I found nice, the time. Yeah. So I'm curious yeah. to know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you have mentioned, you have done extensive and detailed research on Maharaji, some of his followers. Uh, you have also visited his ashrams at Nainital, Neem Karoli, Akbarpur, Allahabad, Lucknow, Kanchi, Vrindavan, uh, where he finally left his body. Uh, how long did it take uh, to do the entire research and then to shoot your film? Uh, what so are the actually, different difficulties you uh, faced during the shooting? Oh, I didn't really go about in a very organized way, which as most filmmakers who would, you know, write a proposal and then get it funded, do a recce prior to starting. So the recce and everything was just all in one. I just decided I want to make this film. And then as luck would have it, there was one Maharaji devotee who lived in Halwani and he was a wedding photographer. You know, and he said, I'll come and help you record interviews. So we just started randomly going and meeting people and interviewing. And I was not even thinking about the sound or the background. <laughs> it was just so enthralled by the stories. And it was like discovering all the incredible, uh, delightful stories and trying to see, oh, which makes sense. And I was transcribing them for, a, you know, I would spend a lot of time transcribing the interviews so that I would slowly be able to figure out which one I can include in the film. It took me a long time to figure out the structure and everything. But anyhow, I went around just interviewing people and then we realized we needed some something which was going to have, you know, incorporate the whole story, some other visual imagery. And that's when uh, I, I realized that I needed to get in touch with another cinematographer. And I was lucky because I, met, I had this friend, Ramani, who I, I, when I, back in the days when I was in documentary film, when I worked for a documentary filmmaking group for a year, I just emailed him after 10 years or more than that. And I messaged him saying, I'm making this film and I really need some help with video. Mm -hmm. And he, he was live in Chennai and he's moved to Delhi. <laughs> I was teaching filmmaking here. So it was like a serendipity again, you know, again for me to have him come on board. So we went around and, and it was overall, the process was about, I started in August, 2017 yeah. and I, uh, just about finished like a few months ago. So, so uh, approximately two, months, two years. More it's around three years, I would say. And I also have a longer version of the film because oh, I really? had hours, because how Ramani shoots is that he shoots hour and hour uh -huh. footage. And I'm really grateful that he did that because at that at the time you don't know what's relevant and what's not and which story you're finally going to you know, pick up and which visual image will suit that. Mm -hmm. So for, sometimes I used to get exasperated with him because I used to feel he's, you know, shooting nonstop. How am I going to go through so many hours of footage? Yeah, I know but, he's, a, he's an excellent cinematographer, award-winning cinematographer. Yes, 
he's a, yeah. he's he's a prolific uh, filmmaker as well because he's made some right. 50 plus films ah. so right. yeah i was really grateful to have him on board mm -hmm. because i got to learn a lot and what's nice about him that he gives you that creative freedom to explore and he doesn't give you he doesn't say this is right this is wrong you know it's like you can do it the way you you think is best right so that that's something that are not a, a lot of people in the field uh you know have offer you that kind of freedom because sometimes people are very rigid and particular and specific yep. so i was happy to have you know had that engagement association uh you must have visited baba's ashram several times uh yes. but he is no more there right now physically so how do you feel when you you uh, you are there when you go there uh which ashram do you generally go and uh, So I, I, have you ever uh, felt his presence like other people have narrated his presence? They still feel their his presence. So, did you as also had any similar uh, experience? Oh yes, when I was making the film, especially I felt really his presence. Uh, you know, really uh, just being immersed in it, and and that was the that was the thing that gave me further impetus to continue working on it. Otherwise, you know, there are times when you don't know what you're doing. and you have all kinds of questions so it was really that immersion uh, of his presence especially when I, when whenever he he's spoken about his stories are told his devotees are there it's like that guy in the end towards the end of the film he says that you know whenever he is whenever he's spoken of whenever ever his kirtan is he is there he's present mm -hmm. so uh, it's it was constantly like that not only when when we travel to his ashrams but certainly when he went from one ashram to another it was like it's um you know discovering different aspect of him so in neep karori it's a very raw and powerful uh, form he did his meditations there but in kenchi it's a different energy and and yet kenchi is uh, still regarded as among the most powerful because it is the best maintained and mm. you know it's is uh, where he spent a lot of time his last you know in his last years that's where he spent his most of time uh, so after watching day, you film i would like to visit uh, his ashram and uh, have the similar experience i am very uh, curious to go there yes no you really must and it's also that once you have you know experienced him in some ways you don't necessarily have to keep going to his ashram to feel his presence and that's what uh happens to his devotees of course it gives you a nice kind of a, you know it it give it gives you a boost but if you if you are just you can tune in there somewhere and you can feel him and that's that's why at the end of the film uh this guy peter mashasta who's also a teacher he says that that you know it's ultimately finding the guru within and it's all about tuning in to that presence mm -hmm. of these higher ascended beings from within mm -hmm. us Mm -hmm. so that's what maharaji also wanted to ultimately free us from mm -hmm. all the paraphernalia you mm -hmm. know Especially. in fact we have received many uh, interesting comments uh, on the uh, chat box so i'll just read out few comments for you uh, a viewer writes mesmerizing what an absolutely lovely film uh, amritanshu uh, another user writes manjula jay neem karodi baba uh, Uh, rekha writes uh, jai nim karoli baba so there are many uh, messages which we have received uh, yeah, i think it's because the film there were lots of uh, there was a streaming problem so a lot of people couldn't tune in for long because of that maybe i was this, i was experiencing that when i was trying yeah, to stream uh, i i knew yeah, yeah. absolutely that problem so uh, with your permission i i will i will stream it once again on tuesday evening and i will yes, rectify okay. and rectify the problem so uh, i have already messaged in the uh, chat box that on tuesday night at 9 pm i will screen it again uh, and we will rectify the problem hopefully yeah then it would be smoother we we will try and get that also information across to the others and yes, also yes. some had difficulty in registering but maybe know, we can uh, find a way around yeah we will work upon it today yeah. uh, uh actually uh, so uh, i wanted to know baba never believed in uh, baba believed in actually loving serving and feeding people around him 
but uh, he ne- uh, never encouraged holy bath in river ganga uh, but he was a great believer of lord hanuman so it is strange to know that he never encouraged meditation which is often said to be a method of uh, getting closer to almighty yeah it for me also it was like a big question mark like uh-huh. what maharaj is saying no to yoga no to meditation when his right. western uh, devotees used to come mm-hmm. he used to say no that's not the way because he felt that uh, unless you uh, purify yourself in different ways you, you know the yoga and meditation is in the way but that's 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 his uh, path he is he is a bhakti yogi you know mm-hmm. guru and for him uh, and for hanuman ji as they say mm-hmm. in kali yoga what they suggest the best thing to do is to chant the name of the of the lord and to serve people and like you know if people would ask him how do i raise my kundalini he would say feed people so so in that sense that was what maharaji's way was mm-hmm. and for some people it doesn't that's what works and for for others maybe meditation works so you know there are different ways for different people and we have to accept and understand that there's no one way and you have everyone has the freedom to explore what works best for them so it's it's not good to just think that it's only through this path that i can attain what i need to you know for so many beings they never did any yoga and meditation mm-hmm. and if you do kirtan maybe that's one way of actually being in a meditative state yes and and you what happens also is that you know when we meditate we often get this thing that oh i'm meditating there is this thing about the mm-hmm. i becomes a little larger there mm-hmm. but when the path of bhakti is more about just kind of surrendering and not thinking about yourself mm-hmm. and, and just being giving up and you know immersing yourself in whatever else yes. you can do for others so right. service, uh-huh. service was such a important aspect in that of course even within service there are ways where our egos can get enhanced but that's the what maharaj said that if you just chant the name mm. it's so simple it's as simple as that you don't have to do anything else yes you are right so uh, bhakti is another form of meditation of course absolutely and serving people another form of uh, taking a deep intentions Yes and it's not that he was against that uh-huh. but it's just that he didn't say you have to do this mm. you know many people did that and there are a lot of his devotees would mm. be there for the mag mela in allahabad you mm. know in december year after year they would spend that whole month there mm. and uh, very much part of that you know the conventional sanatan dharm uh, which a lot of his indian uh, followers did follow but that's not necessarily what he prescribed mm. and he gave different prescriptions different people you know so it was not a one size fits all so that's the beauty because he was having that personal mm. that very personal interaction and that's why he never liked it when there were very large crowds that would gather around him mm. he always tried to say jao 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 was like his favorite mantra and he was a mystic matlab not many people uh, he didn't believe in uh, gathering a large crowd as you uh, mentioned yes yes yeah. even though he had the who's who coming to him mm-hmm. you know he had the who's who in terms of like uh, there's shankar dayal sharma there are so many stories of him coming yeah. there was uh, you know the governors of up and there were often times when he was trying to not meet them he didn't want to meet always but then they were all coming to him anyway he had a very some very influential people as part of his you know satsang mm mm-hmm. acha uh, ramdas ji expired on uh, in december 2019 yes uh, just so when did you meet him and last and uh, how was your experience with him it's very unfortunate i couldn't meet him i was planning to go actually uh-huh. to uh, you know to hawaii but it was it didn't happen before mm-hmm. i could do that he had left so i that's why i have I haven't put his interviews but because there are films that have been made on him Okay. And there are other people who have spoken about him in the film. Okay. Uh, I feel it it kind of has him, you know, his, sure. his presence is there. Mm-hmm. Um but I couldn't uh, I couldn't meet him. For some of the other Americans I could do a Skype interview with mm-hmm. them as been included 
but for Ramdas, I've I've been very keen to go personally and mm -hmm. meet him. But yeah. Uh, what is the next project you are thinking of doing after this? Well, uh, I have so much good footage from this film and very good stories and content mm -hmm. which still uh -huh. need to be put, put out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm planning to make another film, which is this one. This film was more talking about just Maharaji's stories mm -hmm. uh, to people, but the next film will be more about the individuals and their stories and how they kind of, you know, uh, change their life course. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm planning or something like that, you know. I um, think you can do a web series, in fact. That will yeah. be a good idea. Do a web series on Maharaji. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people have suggested that, but I think I just want to do maybe one good film with the best of those individual stories because I just couldn't include them in this. It didn't fit in this format. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, for normal people who are not his devotees or, you know, a mainstream audience cannot uh, have a, you know, attention span mm -hmm. of beyond two, two and a half hours. Already I know that I'm, I'm stretching it for for a lot of people, it's, it's very time. beautiful film. Not at all. Many people in within our team also, those who have seen this film, uh, they had very uh, uh, they lauded this film, and most of, of them are saying that festival ke baad Nainital chalte hain. This is the plan which we have already That's started. So nice. That is so nice. I'm so happy to hear that. That's what I think Maharaji's with Maharaji's grace. Uh, that's what he wants, maybe for for him to reach more people. So, uh, and what, what is your travel plan now? Because you are a traveler. <laughs> no, I think I'm just <laughs> traveling within right now. Okay. And that's also an enormous travel. But yeah, Maharaji is, uh, I think that he's kind of uh, inspired me first to, to do some other seva initiatives. So I'm trying to slowly work towards that, you know, in terms of maybe feeding people in some way. So I'm slowly working on that. And at some point I'm going to start working on this, on this other film to do justice to all the great interviews right. that we had. Some we couldn't include in this film at all. And there's also another version of this film, which is about two hours, 45 minutes. You so, should have sent that film to us, in fact. No, no, the one that you have screened is two hours, nine minutes. Okay. Yeah. So there's another one, which is two hours, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have made a very inspiring film, very uh, motivating film, and uh, yes, very beautiful film. There's no other word. It's a very beautiful film. And every frame of this film, uh, we keep getting uh, inspiration. Maharaj's uh, grace also, we keep seeing his grace through the film. That means so much to me, you saying that. And it's all Maharaj's grace, really. Yes. And we will screen it again, and I'll send the message, to send a revised poster also, so that we can... Uh, that will be super. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank yeah. you. Thank See you, you again. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Ram Ram.